hi there this is Carrie from Stamp with CT welcome to our Wednesday Facebook live let's see what is today today's the 15th isn't it yes, it is. the 15th of March welcome everybody so if you are catching the replay you're going to be seeing this part of the video if people join live probably not but want to say welcome glad you're here so we will wait just a second, and Oliver is under the table, so you may hear his little nails clicking. And I also have another guest with me today. Waving. <laughs> Dale is waving. He is going to help us with the project today because we're using a fun technique. And if you guys know me, you know that I am not great at coloring. It's not something that brings me joy. I know it does a lot of you, and I am so delighted for you. And Dale is really good at coloring, water coloring, using the blends. And it's just um, a great opportunity with him on spring break to share a little bit of his talent with us today. So he will be coloring with the water painters for us really excited about this. I think you're going to love the way that he can show you how to use the products that I don't share very often. So I see we've got a couple people hopping on. I hope you'll say hello. We're glad you're here. So we're going to do things just a little bit differently today since Dale is with us. I'm going to do the door prize first. So if you watched the video last week, you know that I have some of the iridescent pastel gems that were the prize from last week. And the way that you're entered for a chance to win those gems is by putting a comment, putting a thumbs up or heart reaction, or sharing the video. So let me look here at our winner. It is Phyllis Walker. So thank you, Phyllis, for your comment and for watching the video. Thank you, everyone, that did the same. Um, it really does help me in the Facebook algorithms. Every day I check and every day this page is growing and that's because of y'all and I really, really appreciate the engagement that you give so we can continue to grow and meet new crafters and welcome more crafters into um, Stamp with CT and CT's Craft and Connect. We just love being able to inspire and share with people. So congratulations, Phyllis. Let me know your address. Send me a message. And we looked through our prize basket, and we found these cute little dragonfly charms. Now, we're not using these today, but we could because they actually go really well with the little project that we're making. But these are really cute little charms. So we've got a little container with the dragonfly charms, and this will be the prize for today. So be sure to leave a comment, share the video if you have friends or family that might like to see what we're creating and definitely give us a thumbs up or a heart we love that it's just so encouraging for us um and i just dropped them on the floor <laughs> wait Oliver. thank you let me see if i can find them okay there we go thank you oliver Dale, will you look on the other table one of the cards that cheryl made is over there i wanted to show that chevron fold you see it towards the back actually I think there are two cards it's under some papers in the meantime I'll show you this adorable card that I got from my friend Sharon and it is so cute such a sweet little st. Patrick's Day card absolutely love it if you can't find it I'll get it in a minute so thank you Sharon this was a sweet surprise and Dale and I really enjoyed this I love it and then my friend Cheryl who is a new friend and new team member, she came by the house last week and she had something she was so super excited about from Simply Simple Stamping, Connie Stewart. She shared a Chevron Fold card. Isn't that what it's called, Dee? Yes. And she um, found this tutorial and then created a couple of different projects using this where you fold the designer series paper and it gives it that really cool effect so you've got some dimension to it and just a really pretty way to use small pieces of paper 
And she did share this even in our team meeting last night. She did an awesome job. So we're so glad Cheryl is part of our team. And I love that she is sharing inspiration. And then I wanted to show you, we didn't do this last night, but even on the inside, she used the little pieces that were left to create kind of a frame for the inside panel. So I thought that was really, really pretty and a cool way to use little pieces of designer series paper, which let's be honest, we all have those, right? Okay, Dale, you wanna see if there's anybody joining? Yeah, six. All right. Yay. Welcome, everybody. Hope you'll say hello. I will go back and read all the comments when we get done. So glad to have you here with us, whether you're watching the replay or if you're live. So we are using some really fun products today, and it is from the Rain or Shine Sweet Collection. Now, this is what we're using in our stamp class on Saturday, and we are making four really cute don't you think they're cute Dee? oh yes oh my gosh they're so cute four fun folds in class on saturday so it is going to be a super fun class now we do that in person and we also do it virtually in a facebook group called ct's craft and connect when the video is over i will put a link to that facebook group because even though it's too late to register and get the class packet, you can always watch the video. And if you have these products or something similar, you can create the projects just like we do. You'll just have to do a little bit more work, some cutting and scoring, but we're gonna share measurements and we're gonna have a lot of fun creating some really, really cute cards. You're not gonna wanna miss it. So if you're not part of CT's Craft and Connect, you're gonna want to be, and I will put that link for you. Okay. Okay, hey, let's take a look first at this super cute little stamp set playing in the rain. There is a coordinating die set that goes with this as well. This is a red rubber stamp set, which I love for these line images because you get such nice crisp stamping and it just really um, gives you a very nice image. So you've got some little critters and then you've got a couple of sentiments and we're gonna be using Oh Happy Day today. Let me set that over there, Dee. And then the designer series paper is so, so cute. And it has those same little critters. Now, some of the dies do coordinate and line up with some of the designer series paper, but not all. So this also gives us a great opportunity for some fussy cutting. If we like to fussy cut, if not, then we don't, right? Right. So this also has, what did it call it, a UV coating? Yes. And so it has some shine to it, almost as if it has been embossed. So this paper is just so adorable. I love it, and I know you will too. If you already have it, you know it's really, really cute. Perfect for um, these spring projects and definitely for projects for kids. So this is the card that Dale is gonna be sharing with you today, how he created it. We just used a piece of that designer series paper that has the embossed clouds, and then it also has the cute little field of flowers. Stamp that Oh Happy Day and cut that out and matted it with a piece of designer series paper just to give it a little bit more pizzazz. But he colored that little bunny using the water painters and it's so, so cute, and he looks like he's just hopping and skipping along through those flowers. So adorable. And then we made this where it could be a gift card holder by using a scrap of designer series paper and just adhering the edges. You could also tuck, I know when the grandsons were younger, I would tuck a little $5 bill, $10 bill. You could even put something like maybe a Ghirardelli square, something that's a little flat um, a piece of candy. So lots of options with this. You could also just adhere that down and let that be part of the decoration, but I thought it would be fun to make it a gift card holder. So I think we're gonna turn it over to Dale and he's gonna show you how he used the water painters to create this cute little bunny and give you some tips on that. Okay, the first thing we did was we took and stamped a couple of images on a piece of watercolor paper. And we, if you don't want it to run, you can use this stays on black to uh, stamp your image. 
and the the color won't blend in. If or you, bleed in. Or yeah. bleed in. Uh, if you're okay with it bleeding in and giving it a little more dimension, then you can use any of the colors that stamp uh, of the classic stamping pads. That or memento tuxedo black. Right. I did not show them, Dale, before we get um, really deep into this, if you'll grab the catalog and show them what page okay. this suite comes from in the mini catalog. Oh, mm -hmm. It's right there. It's already open to it. There it is. So the rain or shine. The rain or shine. What page is that? It's page 50. It has a little kite up in the corner. Mm -hmm. That's cute. And so yeah. it shows you all the components then on page 51, the stamps and dies, and there's a really cute little raindrop um, embossing folder, and some of the cutest little flower embellishments. They are tiny, but they are really, really cute. Uh, it says you get 300 of them, and mm -hmm. I believe. Yes, <laughs> 300 tiny little flowers. <laughs> and we'll be using those in stamp class as well. You want to show also where the watercolor paper can be found because that's one kind of a little hidden gem. Um, that's in the annual catalog and it's page one, uh, 140. 140. It's this liquid 100 watercolor paper that's um, five by seven and a half and it's nine bucks a pack for mm -hmm. 10 sheets. Yeah, so you want to kind of use it judiciously because it's not like a regular pack of paper. While you could use that on your complete card front, we tend more to use that for focal images. Okay. All right. Um, kind of show what you're using first, all your different products. Okay. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, the water painters, which are um, yeah, a set of three. You have three different sized tips on your brushes. You want to show them? Yeah. I got ahead of myself. <laughs> Let's just get them all out. I appreciate you doing this because um, and so, you have some awesome coloring skills. Oh, I don't know about that. You do. The, you have a wide brush, a medium brush, and then a fine brush. I don't know if you can, I uh, don't know if you can tell yeah, if you How bring much? it maybe a little bit closer to the camera a bit. Yeah, it's there's a good difference between the three brushes. So which one are you going to be using today? Uh, or are you going to use all of them? I'm going to use the medium and the fine. Okay. And uh, Get the others out, that other one out yeah, of the way. Get the other one out of the way. So that comes in a three pack, and I think that they are $13. They are also in the annual catalog. And then uh, put the tips back on them because I don't want to live dangerously. Okay, so they're easy to fill. You just unscrew that top part and, and fill it with water, right? Just right. take it to the kitchen. Right, and I also have a little, uh, I keep a little, little jar of water with me to add some water to the painters. I'm also going to use the uh, Stampin' Bright marker to, once we die cut it, we're going to, Use this to ink the edge so that it'll help it stand out or distinguish it. Okay. And then... Uh, what ink colors are you using? What I have on the table is the Mango Melody, Flirty Flamingo, and we'll probably use the Old Olive. And I used the Balmy Blue for the water when I did the water earlier. But we're not using that part on the card are we right. and then because we're going to do a balmy blue background we'll make his jacket old olive to make him kind of stand out a little bit more okay and then i think you've got a couple more things over here you've got a paper towel yep and you've got a little scrap of paper right got a scrap of paper so okay. I'll put my scrap of paper nearby put my paper towel nearby oh and some blocks you've got those over to the left yes so one of the first things I do is pick a color I'm gonna do like we did on the the one up here that we she showed earlier where we paint his nose and his cheeks and uh, 
This is the one we I did yesterday to practice a little bit. We'll take the flirty flamingo. And what I normally do is just on the corner down here is just barely touch the lock onto it and get a little ink to transfer over. Making yourself a little palette. Yeah. You don't need a whole lot. And then bring this guy down just a little bit. Close that up. It doesn't take much ink at all. So we'll take the fine tip and uh, make sure it's nice and wet. And just drop a little drop out of the, squeeze it just a little bit and drop a little water out onto the, to the block and just kind of mix the uh, ink with the water. And then I test it on a, to see if it, and the more you to use, see if what? To, to see if the color, if it's too bold or, and the more you mark with it, the lighter it gets. And then when you get it to the color that you want, it's going to dry a little bit lighter. Okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and just put him in a little nose, a little in his ears. You just kind of dab it in? Yeah, just kind of, just barely touch it and let the water move out across. So what's the advantage of using the watercolor paper? It, it absorbs the water and it just kind of helps. Um, it can take a little bit more water. Can it, can, it can take a lot more water. And um, just normally kind of try to rinse the color out of it once. Well, I didn't do his other ear. Uh, <laughs> well, you can just put some more color in. Oh, yeah. You can, you can always add more color in. And another thing that you can do is if if you have an area where the ink's there and it's not, um, uh, it, it's got a lot of ink, it will make it real dark. And so you can add a little bit of darkness into it. But like I say, the more you paint with it, the lighter it gets. And so... But you can always let it dry and go back and add a little bit more if you want to. Sure. So I'm going to get this ink pad out of the way. I'm going to color the rest of his body with the uh, Mango Melody. I'll do the same thing. We'll grab a little ink off of it. Or a lot of ink. You don't want to put your water painters directly to your ink pad, do you? No, that'll make them uh, bleed out, and that's not a I mean, not a good idea. Not a, not a great idea, no. And then uh, just kind of squeeze the. Make tube. sure that that's in the. All right. Yeah, there you go. Squeeze the tube a little bit so that the water kind of beads out onto the onto the block, and then just kind of pick up some ink. Check it. Oh yeah, he's gonna be nice and bright. Okay. So we'll, and then we'll just kind of, and then you don't have to, you don't have to um, color all of him. Just kind of give him some color. Oh, I meant to give him some cheeks. He can go back. And then, uh, you kind of let the water do the work, don't you? You try, yeah. Just you just want to dab it on there and let the let it kind of blend off. And if you go out of the lines, do you just have to start over? No, 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 no. We're gonna we got a fix for that. Okay. If you get it all out of the lines, and then um, let me go back in. I need some cheeks. Bill's got a little uh, cold, and you know why? Because it's spring break. As a teacher, it seems like every time he gets a break, he gets sick, sinus infection or something, so. But it's been a pretty good week, hasn't it? It's been a good week. You're only halfway done.
Yeah, that's not good. What? And I'm halfway done. I wish I wasn't. <laughs> Not ready to go back. You so want to rewind. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll do the. Let's make sure. Yeah. There we go. Just coloring. Just kind of give him some color. And you don't have to feel all the. the uh, you don't have to fill him up completely with color. Just kind of. I mean, you have a pretty light touch for that, don't you? Yeah, because you want the, um, uh, yeah. You want what? You just want it to, um, just kind of blend in, and then, like on this other one, where you put a little, a little more back in the back side of him in different places to kind of give him uh, some shading. Some shading. And you want the water to do most of that for you. So we got those two out of the way. Now let's give him a, give him a green jacket on. Okay. Now where are you pulling these colors from? The colors are pulled from the designer series paper that, and so you know that if you've got the matching ink pads to the colors, that's what I like about the water painters is that you have the matching um, color marker because it's just water and ink. So no matter what color ink pads you have, you kind of have that marker too then, that watercolor. Right. So you can do coloring. Um, you don't, it's not, maybe that's a little bit dark. Okay. I didn't get enough water on that. Cute little bunny. And then, so there's a fox, a turtle, a bunny, a dog, and a pig on the designer series paper. And you've got the bunny, the turtle, and the fox in the stamped images. So it what, gives you lots of options. In watercolor, you're supposed to go, or not, one of the techniques is to go from very light to dark. So you come back in like on this bunny right here, I've painted his jacket and I've done it in a very light wash and then come back and pick up some of those, some of the ink, if you can see on the, where it's, I didn't dilute it with the water. And if I, you can see how it darkens things up on the test pad right there, test palette. And then just kind of come in here and just Add a little bit of shading. It's almost like a dry brush technique. And just gives a little more interest and follow the lines of the stamp, right? Yeah, just work. Just however you see it. Mm-hmm. And then you want to leave a little bit of the the light or the white to make it look like it's got some shine to it. And if you scrub too much, it'll get muddy. That's one of the tricks with watercolors. If you want it, it's easy to overpaint. So, slow and easy. Okay, you got it all painted? No, I got him all painted. Okay, let's move some things out of the way. And while he's drying. All right. And definitely want to move your water. What else you got over there? I got the blocks. I got my paper towel. Okay. Yeah, we'll move all of that out of the way. And you're going to bring in one of your favorite tools, right? Oh, yeah. And actually, Dale, what you... Yeah, let's let's go ahead and move that back out of the way. Why don't you work on putting the card base together, and that'll give us a little bit more, more drying time. Okay. Bring in the card base. And fold it on our score line. So it's eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Oh, Just a standard card base, and it's balmy blue. That other one I used, the Mango Melody. 
or we use the Mango Melody. It's a partnership, right? Teamwork oh, yeah. makes the dream work. Oh, yeah. So burnish that. And then you see kind of how it's a little bit rough where I cut it at the bottom or top? You feel that? No. The yeah. cut edge is just a little bit rough. So run that bone folder across that too, just real gently. And that helps to smooth that out. I probably need to change my trimmer blade. So if you have that problem where you can feel that roughness, just use your bone folder. Okay. All right. So you're ready to put your inside panel. Okay. So how much do we use? Of what? Of the glue. Before you do the glue, stop and think about if you want your, if you want to make oh. that a. Yeah, let's um, do that. Make it a gift card gift holder. Gift card holder, a little money holder. So we'll use a little tearing tape. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you can just go around the edges with a little bit of tear and tape. I'm not going to be a good, as good at this as you are. Why? Just not. You want to get it right to the edge, okay? All right. You just want a good adhesive that's nice and strong, like tear and tape. Um, the liquid glue would work. I just, for something like this, like to use Stamp and Seal, Stamp and Seal Plus, or tear and tape. Just put a little, a little piece across the bottom. You don't want your gift card or money falling out the bottom, right? Yep. <laughs> they wouldn't be happy if they got it and it had, the money wasn't I don't in think it. Um, Ethan and Caleb would have ever let the money fall out of the card. It would not be good if it fell out of the card. I know a lot of you make a lot of cards for grandkids, so I just think this set is super cute. Okay, what were you doing there? That was a little trick you can share, or a little tip. I just, I use the bone folder to um, burnish it down and make it stick real solid so that when I get ready to pick up the uh, paper, and you use your tater pick, don't you? I do. And then, because if I don't get it stuck real good, then it happens. I always pick up the tape with the backing. The backing. Yeah, that's a good tip to be sure and use your bone folder or finger to burnish it down and then use your tater pick tool because you don't have fingernails. I'm trying to keep them trimmed Pretty off. short. Yeah. <laughs> and then come in here and, uh, Get this lined up to the edge. Of course, you could do some stamping on the inside if you wanted to as well. And just, let's go ahead and flip it over and give it the back rub like Judy says. Okay. Okay. Now you're ready for your liquid glue. And then we do the, on the liquid glue, we do the how about a lot and a lot? No. No. It's, it's a dot, dot, not a lot. <laughs> and the squiggle in the middle for fun. That keeps it away from the edges so we can put our fingers out there and mm -hmm. get everything placed the way we want it. You know the tricks, right? I've heard, I've heard them talk about them. Nice even borders. Yeah, I got a little bit more on the top and the bottom. But well, but it's handmade. It looks good. Good job. Okay. Yeah. Now we'll put the measurements. I'll go in and edit the description of the video. You may need to run your bone folder down that side again. It's not cooperating, is it? Show no. it who's boss. okay it'll be okay the post office will make sure that that card is flat once <laughs> they're done with it <laughs> uh, uh, we're just gonna glue all these down mm -hmm. okay or you can pop it up if you so desire so we've got a piece of old olive cardstock and it is five and three eighths by four and an eighth 
because we're just going to have a very small border. And we'll go ahead and put the glue on the DSP. And what that does, we'll show you, kind of hold that DSP over the blue. Don't adhere it, of course, but just hold it over the blue, Dill. When you turn it over. You turn it over and kind of hold it over the blue, and you can see that it really pulls the blue out of the designer series paper. Okay. Now when you put that green layer, that old olive layer, and it's just a very small border around the edges, what's going to happen is it's going to pull the green from the DSP, and I can definitely see a big difference in how that looks. So I really think adding that makes a difference. You could also use the Flirty Flamingo, the Mango Melody, just really pulling those colors from your DSP. You could use the white, and that would make the clouds show a little bit more. Then Ooh, that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> can you use too much liquid glue? yes yes you can ask us how we know that we end up with it on our fingers okay oliver just one minute y'all know oliver gets his t-r-e-a-t -E when we're done and so i bet we're right at 30 minutes or a little bit beyond because he kind of knows how time works <laughs> but we're almost done okay now bring this one back in so you can see the difference to using the Mango Melody card base versus Balmy Blue. Uh, Do you want to put your sentiment on or you want to go ahead and cut your little let's critter, cut first? critter first? Okay. Uh, which which guy you want? The one on the right or the left? Oh, did you do both? Yeah, I did both. Oh, I didn't realize that. Um, I wasn't paying attention, was I? Either one, whichever one you like. Let's see. So let's bring mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. Do I need to cut it? Yeah, cut it. Cut um, it. there's a trimmer right there to your left so the mini takes paper that's about three inches wide so that's why he said ooh because that paper is a little bit too wide for the mini but that's okay we've got a fix for that too don't we we got our tools handy and Dale loves using this mini stamp and cut and emboss machine and I know several of you have this machine and it is an amazing little workhorse Maybe push it back just a little bit, Diddy. Okay. We need another little, no, that's, no it. that's it. So you've got your platform and your base plate, which you can tell ours is pretty well loved and worn. Your image, and then he's got the coordinating die to cut that little bunny out. Get him lined up. So I can make another card since you colored both of them. Mm-hmm. Or maybe even a little tag. That would be a cute tag. And then just add your next plate. And Dale's going to crank that through. Huh. Put your hand up here. Is it not wanting to go in? Okay, so I just learned a little tip. Pull that back out and we'll share the tip. Stampin' Up! Um, recently did a video about the mini. And they're telling us to put the plates like an E. So you're going to put your base plate, then back up that okay. bottom plate, and then bring your other plate forward. Oh, okay. And it makes it less um, bulky as it's heading into the machine. I got so you. it's like an E. Oh, we got our image. Yeah, get that all centered back up. So that's just a little tip to help get that started. More so in the mini than the big stamp and cut and emboss machine, but you can use that very same technique with that. The other thing they recommended is standing while you die cut, and then the hand that you're using to crank, you put your other hand on the top of the machine to help stabilize it. Sorry if you get a little bit of an earthquake. I think the table shakes with this, but that's okay. So that was way easier, wasn't it? Oh yeah, that worked out well. Okay, so we learned another little tip. Uh -uh. And of course, you can use the regular stamp and cut and emboss machine to cut this little image out. But isn't it nice to have that mini? What you need? 
Um, he's got a pretty big border. Does he? Yeah. Did the die shift? No, no, it's just the board. It leaves a fairly good size border. Well, you don't have to use the marker if you don't want to. On your image. Just show them on um, here, like how it would. Okay. You can use the uh, the painter end of the of your Stampin' Rock marker. Your brush tip. Your brush tip to to darken the edges so that it takes the white away from the paper. If you want to. And he was thinking of doing that to help this little bunny stand out. But if it's got a big white border, then don't do that. If it's much closer to the black line, that's a great tip. Hmm. Just to take the marker and go around the die cut image. So he would come around this edge with the side of the marker. But we're not going to do that. We'll just do that next time. Okay. And then, uh... Let me figure out how your flowers are, where you want to put your little bunny. Uh, it turned out cute, didn't it? Nice. And if you went out of the lines, you cut away. You can't even tell. Yeah, you cut away. That's why you don't stress about the coloring, because when you cut it out, and if you wanted to get closer to that black line than the dye does, you could fussy cut it. Oh, let's put a lot of water dimensionals. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we're going to throw that in the floor. <laughs> uh, and then you use your take your pick tool to take those backings off again. It's a great tip. Helps keep those uh, backings wrangled too, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. And... He needs to be in his happy spot right there. <laughs> and you can put your sentiment wherever you want it. That's just the perfect little sentiment with that guy, isn't it? Oh, I do think so. Really cute. Spring is sprung. It's time to Hop around. Well, technically, spring starts, what, next week? Yes. Technically, but it's well, spring break, so. Well, I got news for you. The um, mesquite tree has its leaves coming out, and mm -hmm. mesquite trees don't lie. <laughs> okay. They never get it wrong as far as there's not going to be another freeze. Okay. Weather trees. Yeah, they're, they're when they leaf out, you know it's it, we're, we're past the okay. I'll also be just a minute. Thank we're past you. the freezy period. Get him on there. You're just gonna glue him down. Or are you gonna pop him up? I'm gonna pop him up. You popped okay. him up. I did. I popped it up. As if you have any doubt, you pop it up. Absolutely. So I know we went a little bit long today. I hope that y'all have enjoyed this project. And I am thankful that Dale was able to hop on with us. You like that? <laughs> we do like that. You do like that? Mm-hmm. To help us make a cute card. That's adorable. I love that you can mix the designer series paper with the colored image and it just looks so cute. All right. Oh, let's, let's get this down here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. If you'll bring both projects in, I'm going to get that little piece of scrap okay. up there. So if anybody wants to take a screenshot, sometimes. Oh, that's your other little bunny. Yeah, that's little bunny. Sometimes people will do that. So, super cute. You could add some of those little flowers. You could add some other embellishments if you want to, but you don't have to. So, hope you guys enjoyed this project. Let us know if you have any questions, and we will edit the description of the video to share CT's Craft and Connect group link and also the measurements and supplies that we used. Okay, we will see you next time. Thanks, y'all.